Hello and thanks for stopping by. This is The Outer Worlds for Xbox One, and I'm playing this game on an Xbox One X console. I was looking for a while, and I managed to find a decent Xbox One backup unit, and now I'm giving this game a go. Basically, I have enough Xbox games where I need to make sure I can play them into the future, so tracking down a good console is important to me. My other Xbox One console is the original release, which means this one's faster and is actually in 4K. Honestly, this is a nice console. Anyway, this game was released by Obsidian in 2019. And there's a direct comparison to be made here. The Outer Worlds is like Fallout, with a different skin and no obvious bugs or failings, to be honest. It seems that some of the directors from this game actually worked on the Fallout games, and it's totally not a surprise once you play this game. I'm a huge fan of the Fallout games, so to get this game, it's great. I think the biggest difference between Fallout and the Outer Worlds this isn't an open-world experience. You have maps instead. Granted, some are bigger than others, of course, but it is not a total free-range walkabout. You can certainly wander. It's just not the same as if you were playing a Fallout game. In Fallout, you can walk out of your vault, just pick a direction, and start going. Here, you start out on a map, and then you basically branch out and get connected to other maps using this outer space interface. You can move back and forth between planets pretty quickly, or space stations is needed, depending on what you're trying to do. In this game, you have a mission tree, or a mission list, really, and you can flip back and forth between the different missions, which is great. I think the one drawback with this, though, sort of, is that you always seem to have a waypoint set on your map, so you know exactly where to go for your missions. I don't know, in Fallout, it just felt a little more open than that. You had to sort of track certain things down. It just feels like there's a lot less tracking down in this game. At least that's what it feels like to me. Now this is a first person experience and you also get this awesome bullet time sort of slowdown that you can use to better plan your offense on the fly. It can be upgraded as you go and it really works as a mechanic in this one. You can take stock of an area and you can use this to really work on critical hits. Maybe you can stun an opponent and you can knock them down, It'd cause a critical injury in like a leg or maybe a headshot. It's really fun to use. Now, the story in this one, it feels normal enough, at least at the start. You awake from being in stasis in some sort of a pod, just like how the Fallout games begin, and you basically escape to a new world. You were rescued by this scientist, right? And the scientist's goal was to rescue all the people on your ship that were in stasis with you. This takes a specific collection of chemicals that this scientist does not have. You were on board a ship that was basically abandoned by the corporation that owns it because it wasn't profitable. This is sort of the underlying theme of the game, actually. Corporations are bad, and they're exploiting and abandoning people. Thus, you become this sort of rogue force that runs through these missions and do these sort of tasks for various people and or corporations, and you kind of define your story as you go in that regard. Sometimes the story's a little tongue-in-cheek, sometimes it's just totally chaotic, but overall it really works. You can do missions, and you can do them in different orders, so it doesn't necessarily feel linear in that fashion. And for the most part, it always feels like there's something interesting to do. The graphics are stunning in this one. And the designs that they have for the space stations, for the cities, and their planetary environments, I think they're fantastic. The colors are vibrant and lush, and the creatures you encounter in the various areas, they feel unique enough to me. I can't say that there's a huge variety to creatures, but... There are a few types of indigenous creatures per planet, and they all tend to look great. And they're always not easy to defeat, either. Now, the style of this game is both futuristic, and it actually feels a little Victorian at times, maybe? You get these loading screens between maps, even with an Xbox One X console, but they fill this load time with these beautiful sketches of these corporate advertisements, or maybe these scientific animal sketches that you might see in these really old science books. It's a beautiful classic appeal, and I really appreciate it. Which actually brings us to the discussion of loading times. There's a definite loading time between maps. Which I'm referring to maps as major areas that need to load. When this occurs, it can take 20 seconds or so to load, and that's kind of a long time. But then you usually get a long time in between loading, and you don't have to worry about it again. I guess unless maybe you go right back outside. Now, the loading times are definitely lengthy. I'm using an Xbox One S console, and man, this thing has power, and they're still taking a long time. 
interesting enough, the loading times are definitely long and you have to wait through them. But the save times in the game, the save times are shockingly fast. I, I almost thought I wasn't saving at first, but it just saves really quick. You can save and be back to moving in the game within seconds. And that's great because you're going to need to save a lot in this game. Also, nice enough, the game performs a lot of auto saves for you. So you never seem to really lose progress, or at least not a lot. Still, I encourage keeping multiple saves for this game, and any game that offers it. Like a lot of games of this type, you have a bunch of skills that you can use in this game, and you're going to pursue the skills you like, and that generally is depending on how you like to play your characters in games like this. You want to be a stealth character, you want to be high charisma to talk to people, I don't know, maybe you just want to be outright smashy smashy. It's all up to you. You can hold four weapons at once in this one. You can have a variety of weapons, no matter what you're looking for, really. You can have handguns, long rifles, plasma weapons, and there are also these science weapons. They're the sort of special weapons in the game, and they have these oddball effects sometimes, like a shrink ray, which might actually shrink your opponents. I think the science weapons are fun enough, although to be perfectly honest, I rarely use them in combat. I think I used one once just to see what it did. They weren't really a necessity. And I think this kind of brings me to the one area of the game that I thought this game was weak in. Weapon balancing. You get these science weapons, and your individual weapons can also have flavors. Some are more favorable against certain types of enemies, like you could have a plasma weapon, a shock weapon, a corrosive weapon, or something called N-Ray. I think this is sort of standard rock-paper-scissors mentality. You give strengths in some circumstances as opposed to others. In this game, though, I didn't have to pay attention to this fact at all until the very last boss fight. I didn't need any special weapon flavor until the very end, and then I just modded one gun to a shock weapon so I could defeat a robotic boss. At least a little more easy than I had originally been playing. I play these games on normal. And the difficulty on normal wasn't enough for me to have to make use of a bunch of things in this game. I'm stuck with a relatively small circle of weapons. I never needed to use a melee weapon. I never needed to use a plasma gun or a science weapon. I think maybe I used five out of, I don't know, maybe 200 weapon mods I found in this game. And even for that, I only needed to use that one mod for one weapon to beat the last boss a little more easily. I just think this could have been tougher on normal, and they could have balanced the weapons different. I think they should have made it so you really need to use a plasma weapon in some areas, or you really need to use a corrosive weapon, but it just wasn't balanced like that. Besides the balancing, the game handles great. The weapons, yeah, they're reasonably varied, even though I didn't really need them, and you can upgrade them to an extent. You have mods, and you can upgrade the levels. I didn't really need to upgrade my weapons at all. I didn't need to worry about the mods that much. I did a few early on, but I didn't really see a benefit of it. I just kept leveling up my weapons, and that seemed to be enough for me. You also have an encumbrance limit in this game, and I think that's a good thing. But in this game, I seem to rarely hit that level. That seemed weird to me. It just felt like the threshold maybe was far lower than it needed to be. You can carry a lot. Like, I didn't even realize, realize it was a thing for a couple of hours, and I was taking everything I could get my hands on. It's, it's weird. Uh, in, when I was playing Fallout in the past, I knew encumbrance was definitely a thing that you had to focus on. You always constantly had to be managing what you're carrying, sell stuff you don't need, or, you know, dispose of weapons in different fashions, but I didn't have to focus on that for this one. You can just carry so much, and it feels a little unnatural. So how's the story? Well... I've beaten this one already. It took me about 30 hours this holiday season, and I have to say, I had a great time wandering around. Just figuring things out and upgrading skills along the way, visiting the different environments. You get a bunch of text choices as you progress through the conversation. You can be rude, you can be aggressive, or you can, you know, just try to talk your way through things politely. It's all up to you, depending on how you want to play, and I like that. There's additional download content out there, and I might actually give that stuff a try. This game was my type of fun, and I consider this was a really good buy. I got it, I believe, used. Fantastic for 30 hours of gameplay. The story might not be groundbreaking, but it's interesting enough. 
you play a hero character in a story thrust into a foreign environment and you become somebody that helps everybody that's out there currently. Standard hero stuff, I think. I think this game was a lot of fun and I consider it a good buy for sure. Well, that's all I have today for Outer Worlds for Xbox One. If you like this type of video, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And thanks for stopping by to give this one a look. I hope to catch you on a future video.